Hello everyone, good day, welcome to vSparks. Today we are going to see what are static pods, its concepts and we are going to see a demo on how to create static pod in the Kubernetes cluster. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. Let us first do a small recap about pods. Pods in Kubernetes are the bare minimal object that is going to run your application in the Kubernetes cluster. In other words, pods are the smallest deployable units of computing that you can create and manage in Kubernetes. These pods encapsulates the containers within it and it represents your application. So when you run a pod, it means you are running an instance of your application. Now, what are static pods? What's the difference between a normal pod and a static pod? Static pods are managed directly by the kubelet daemon on a specific node without the API server observing them. Meaning, these static pods are created, destroyed and managed by the kubelet itself. Let us see this with an example. Whenever you create a normal pod using kubectl commands or with the help of YAML definition files, the request is first sent to the kube API server. The kube API server instructs the kubelet to create a pod. On further, this normal pod is supervised by the API server for any changes going forward along with the kubelet daemon. Whereas on the other hand, static pods are handled directly by the kubelet and they are not in control of the kube API server. Kubelet is responsible for creating and managing these pods once the pod YAML definition file is given to it. You can see these static pods are created without the intervention of Kube API server. More on static pods. Static pods are managed directly by the kubelet. You know this point already. Static pods are bound to only one kubelet on a specific node. You can run static pods in worker nodes as well as in the master nodes. Static pods are not managed by the control plane or the API server. One of the best use case of static pod is Kubernetes control plane bootstrapping. For example, Kube ADM creates the control plane components like API server, scheduler, controller manager as static pods because it cannot create these as normal pods due to the fact that the Kube API server itself is not available before cluster creation. How to create these static pods? There are two ways you can create a static pod. First approach is the file system hosted approach and the second one is the web hosted approach. In the file system hosted approach, we need to create a YAML pod definition file in the local directory of the corresponding node. Then we need to pass the location of the YAML file to the kubelet configuration so that the kubelet will create and manage a pod whatever mentioned in the definition file. In the web hosted approach, kubelet periodically downloads a file from a URL specified in the kubelet configuration. It then interprets a file as a JSON or a YAML file containing the pod definition and then it creates the pod. What will happen if you delete a static pod? The kubelet will start these static pods again as long as the YAML definition file is available to it. The only way to delete the static pod is to remove the YAML definition file from the static pod directory. 
Now let us see a demo on the static pod. These are the things that we are going to do in this demo. Step number one, let us assume these things. We assume that our Kubernetes cluster is up and running and we are able to access the Kubernetes cluster via the command line utility called kubectl. This is our master node where we have connected to the Kubernetes cluster using the command line. This kubectl cluster info command gives the details of your cluster. We have got the response which means we are able to access the Kubernetes cluster. Step number two, inspect the Kubernetes cluster. Check the nodes and the pods. Our cluster is running with one master node and one worker node. Check the pods now. We got no resources in the default namespace. Just check if all the control plane components are running in the cube system namespace as pods. Yes, all the components are running in the cube system namespace. Step 3 create a pod manifest file using the kubelet command. We are going to run this command in the master node. This command will not create a pod but a YAML file containing the necessary definitions to create a pod. Here you can see the pod definition file is created. The image that we are going to use is nginx and the name of this uh, pod is going to be static dashboard. Step number four, create the static pod in the worker node using the pod definition file which we have created in the last step using the file system hosted approach. We can create these static pods in the master node as well. But for this demo, we are going to create the static pod only in the worker node. First, we need to identify the kubelet configurations so as to check the default static pod directory. Just read this config file. Here you can see the static pod path which the kubelet is managing. We are going to create the YAML file in this path only. We can also override this path. Change to that particular directory and create a file using the pod definition which we have created in the last step. Once you create this file in this path, your static pod will be started by the kubelet. Now you can see the static pod would have been started. Static pod names are always suffixed with the node name where it is running. This is one way to identify whether a pod is a normal pod or a static pod. You can also see that this static pod is started in the worker node. Step number five, 
delete the static part and observe the behavior. Let us first delete it using the kubectl commands. Now the pod is deleted. But you can see the static pod is again recreated by the worker nodes kubelet. The only way to delete a static part is to remove the YAML file in the worker node. Let us do it now. Now I have removed the YAML definition file. By now the static part would also be removed. Well, that's it for this lecture. This is the summary that we have discussed for the past few minutes. Thank you from vSparks and thank you for watching this video.